In order to understand in depth the treatise on true devotion to the Blessed Virgin by Saint Louis Maria Guignon de Montfort, nothing more natural than to begin our reflection by saying a few words about the very concept of devotion, a word both used and misunderstood. Most of the time seen as something associated with feelings and emotions of a religious nature, devotion consists in the proper sense, in the readiness of the will to give oneself fervently to everything that concerns the worship and service of God. From this we can now already draw the conclusion that the characteristic note of true devotion is love, and that, as an act of the virtue of religion, the end or term on which it falls cannot be other than God himself. For this reason, devotion to the saints and even devotion to the Virgin Mary must always have God, the beginning and end of all things as its adversary. To be a devotee of the exalted mother of the incarnate word, as well as of this or that saint, means, in the last analysis, to venerate what is in them of God, that is, to venerate in the servants the greatness, the power, the perfections, the goodness, etc., of the Lord. Far from distancing us from God, as some would like, or for making us pay to mere men a coat that is due only to the Creator, as others claim. Devotion, in its multiple and legitimate manifestations, is a means more than effective way of approaching Him and making our hearts burn with love for Him, who bestowed so many benefits on His faithful disciples. With regard to devotion to the Virgin Mary, in particular, Saint Louis warns, writing the opening chapters of his treatise, that Jesus Christ is the ultimate goal of true Marian devotion. It is, therefore, an eminently Christocentric reality. Jesus Christ, he writes, is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. We only work, as the Apostle says, to make every man perfect in Jesus Christ. For it is in Jesus Christ that all the fullness of divinity dwells. Devotion has, of course, a dynamic of its own. In this sense, it should be noted that it has, so to speak, a double aspect. As an act of the virtue of religion, by which we are inclined to render to God the worship which we justly owe Him, devotion is primarily or to that which concerns divine worship. It is, therefore, a disposition of the will by which we make ourselves available to serve Him without delay. It can, however, also spring from another virtue, even more excellent for its object, charity. In the later case, devotion becomes oriented, above all, to love in union with God, of whom we become friends by virtue of sanctifying grace. In this way, as a spiritual author writes, charity causes devotion, in so far as love makes us ready to serve the friend, and, in turn, devotion increases love, for friendship is preserved and increases with the services rendered to a friend. Another point worth insisting on, especially these days, is the fact that devotion is essentially a readiness of the will, as stated above. This means, among other things, that being devout and fervent is not the same as feeling this fervor of the will. The fervor or readiness, writes the same author in another work, consists primarily and mainly in the energetic determination of the will to remain faithfully consecrated to the service of God in spite of frequent and painful dryness, aridity and spiritual trials. This fervor of the will, also called substantial devotion, constitutes at the same time the firm foundation on which the whole practice of devotion rests and the cause of all its merit before God. Without it, 
Purely sensible devotion has no consistency and no real utility. With it, the soul remains calm and unbroken in the service of God amidst all the fluctuations of sense impressions. Indeed, the Lord wants us to be ready and willing to serve Him without delay, at the first call, at the first request. Aware, however, of our radical incapacity, of our excessive and disordered attachment to sensations and consolations, He kindly entrusted us to the maternal care of the Virgin Mary, whom we so often find easier and even sweeter to serve, like children lovingly occupied with the needs and mother's interests. And there is no doubt that, when we faithfully serve the pure mother of God, we will also be serving the one who wanted her as a mother and a suitable helper in the work of redemption. Most Holy Mary, who, unlike Eve, totally offered to God, on the scaffold of the cross, the blessed fruit formed in her womb by the work of the Holy Spirit, we will not refuse to give the offering of herself to the Father, of those who consecrate themselves to her as children and slaves. Uniting ourselves to her, it is impossible not to unite ourselves to Christ, to Christ, to God.